This is set number 60057, the camper van. Man, I love these camper vans that LEGO City puts out, and this one is one of my more favorites. This is a 2014 release, ages 5 to 12, 195 pieces, two minifigures, and it's a modular build, easy start, and retails for $20. This is part of the Great Vehicle series, and has been pretty much the third recent camper van I can remember from LEGO City in the past couple of years. It's a great one at that too. I know I'm getting a little excited before we actually jump into the review, but I'm just excited for this review particularly. Let's take a closer look at this set now. So here we are with the box art for the set. It shows both of our minifigures ready for some canoeing. Um, and also says on the top, modular build, easy start. Just like most LEGO City sets, this is a easy one for kids to handle. And it's divided up into some nice bags. We'll go over those in just a bit. On the back, you can see a little bit of the division, but you can't see exactly what parts are built. But you know that there are two different bags designed for easy building. We get to see all the great vehicles on the bottom section of the box, and is also featured that way on some of the other boxes as well. We also get to see some of the features in the set, and some of the cool pieces that we get, and how you can use this camper van. We also get our man figure. I don't know what to call him, because you don't really have names for these figures. Ha saying, hey, just like any other LEGO City box. We have, let's see if I can do this right. Oh, I got in the wrong order. So, as far as the divisions go for this, we got one giant number one bag. And one smaller bag that goes inside of there. All of those are put together, together for... Instruction book number one. So it has two different books, and you can see right there how the division is um, made up. Instruction book one builds two figures, the canoe, and the first half of the camper van. Instruction book two builds the top half and the wheels. So I won't have to show you that once we get to the second bag. But I would like to show you towards the end of this bag, or for this instruction book as well, it shows you to go on to the second instruction book, and that, that doesn't end there. On the back, it shows you a free online game and app for LEGO City. We'll move this out of the way. And then for bag number two, we get a little bit smaller than the first bag. Less pieces, I suppose. And we also got a smaller bag in there. For both of these bags, if you'd like to see the distribution of pieces and how to build it, check out my building video for this set, which has been posted quite some time ago. Link in the description for that video. There is our instruction bag number, instruction book number two, as it says on the front. And already starts you off with the last part of the instructions from bag number one. Towards the end of these instructions, let's take a look. It shows you on the back how you fit the roof on top of the camper van. You get to see some LEGO City stuff featured on the online website. We get the Great Vehicles collection as shown in LEGO City. So we get to see a lot of these uh, vehicles out and here is our camper van in the corner. Very nice setup for this part of the city. We also get to see them as the individual sets on this side and they just have the one space filled in with some characters. Then we get to see what looks like Lego Police version of the Lego City, with a lot of those uh, things put up in display. We also see Lego Creator, the Forest Animal Set, 3-in-1 build. This is our piece count on the back, two pages, and the win section. So now we'll move all those out of the way. We'll move in some of our pieces, extra pieces that is. And we have one giant sticker sheet. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stickers in this set. A lot of them blend in with the white background on some of the pieces, so you'll have to be very careful when putting them on. We get two of them that fit onto the canoe, and I specify in the building video just to be careful for which side you put them on. They are a little bit different on both sides. And also goes the same for some of these other stickers especially the panel ones that go on the back of the van. We get what looks like only six new uh, six 
extra pieces in this set, and I just happened to make them in a smiley face by accident. See that? That's kind of funny. We got a couple of these one by ones without studs on top, and they are in translucent red and translucent orange. We also got a translucent orange one by one in square form and just a white one. We also got a one by one cheese wedge, and we got an extra ore. That's right. This set comes with three different ores, and if I do miss one in the set itself, I will figure that out later. In this particular set, we don't get too many new 2014 pieces. We do get a lot of them from 2013 and before, but I wanted to give some attention to some of those that you may not find so much in the 2014 waves of different sets. So here we have three different pieces. The first one is this 2x2 cylinder piece, relatively new for 2013. It is featured more prominently in 2014 sets. Correct me in the comments if that hasn't been featured in 2013 and is actually new for this year. The next up we have a 1x2 curve piece. This is a little bit smaller than our 1x3 and 1x4 versions. And this one is found twice in this set and is featured on the front of the van. And this one is not a particularly new piece, but I wanted to bring special attention to it. This is our canoe. It's a one giant piece that is in red. The last time we saw this was in the Lone Ranger line from 2013. And I want to bring this to your attention because we don't get a canoe very often in modern LEGO sets. You can also see that it has stickers on the side, only on the front section where it has this little mountain sticker. And as I turn it around, you'll see that sticker is a little bit different. So like I said before, just be careful when you're putting them on. Keep the sun towards the front. I wonder if that means something. With the camper van, we get two minifigures, one male and one female. They don't have any particular names, and they don't appear to be um, of any certain occupation, but let's just say that they're regular town folk that are going out for a little vacation um, for camping. I can't say if they're at, you know, maybe hiking is an activity of theirs that they like to do sometimes together. I can't say if they're married, but I would assume that they are. Um, both of these minifigures are very generic in terms of modern LEGO City figures. We've seen their torso designs several times before in different creator and city sets. And I know this one has been featured before in some city, but I can't remember which ones. I do remember it in the Lighthouse set from the creator line. Neither of them have back um, faces, so we don't have to take off their hair for that. But I do like this one being in a smaller set, and I also like his jacket. Very nice look on him. The next minifigure we have in the set, as I mentioned, was a female. Now, her hair piece I wanted to note because we don't get it too often, although it has appeared since about 2007. But I still like it being a hair piece in this set, even though it had a brief period of being overused. It's not too bad to use for a hair piece, as I think right now... The female hair pieces are getting a little bit, um, what's the word? Sometimes overused. And even the faces sometimes can be overused. We've had this torso in other sets before. I believe even in 2013 we had it a couple times. She also does not have any back printing on her face. It's kind of a generic figure, just like the other one. Uh -uh. So here we have our camper van. This is the one model that you built in the entire set and obviously um, is divided into two different parts which we've shown you before. We're going to take a look around at the camper van just to show you off all of the details, the colors, and the places for stickers. We have one sticker that goes on this side, one sticker right there, got some windows across, got this little boarding detail as you can see on the bottom. As we look around, we have another sticker as a license plate. I think the back looks kind of funny, but I'll get into that a little bit later. We also have some more stickers, just as shown on the other side. But like I said before, they are in a different direction, so be careful when you're putting the stickers on. And that's probably one of the biggest cautions I should give to you when getting this set. We can also see our minifigures through these windows. Here we have it from the front. You can see the city logo on there and another 
for some reason, they put this in the middle. I thought they would go more towards... I mean, they didn't put it in the middle. They put it towards the side. I thought it would be more of, like, in the middle. And I understand it shouldn't be on two pieces, but then maybe, like, next to it. Maybe they didn't want to keep it so kids would put it in the middle of them. And I'll give you a look from the top with our canoe on. And the canoe on... The canoe is put on pretty simply. Because we just have these middle pieces that are used to attach onto the jumper and that piece we saw before. I'll show you the top first because that's an easier way to go in. First up we have a hatch on the top which can be opened and inside of it we can store a bunch of things. I'm going to take this off so we can get to some of those because one of them is stuck. Inside we have two life jackets, the more modern version of LEGO City life jackets. A little bit thinner in design but also fits around a minifigure just fine. And we also have two different oars. That's right, the two oars are in here, not one as being an extra piece. So we actually get three in the set, you know, cons considering that one's an extra. We'll fit that back on, and it closes pretty nicely. Might have to move it around a little bit, just because, you know, if you're going to fit the canoe on top, you want to get it so that... You just squeeze, squeeze these in there. It wouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm just a little bit OCD, I guess. <laughs> we do have this front section that can pop off very nicely because it's just one giant piece. And inside of here, I don't really know what that section's for. Now, I've seen this in other reviews where somebody would, you know, you could put a second figure in here to keep, keep them resting, or you could just fit more accessories in there. So whichever floats your boat, or in this case, floats your canoe you know what I mean. You do have the capability of fitting a minifigure in there if you wanted to. it will just take one and slide them in. You can see he fits in there pretty snug, although it would be pretty dark under there. But if you needed to, you can do that. Now as you saw, that's pretty easy for us taking off the top because it's only held on by a couple of studs on the bottom. Oops, there goes a bunch of stuff. We'll move that off to the side while we take a look at the inside of the camper van. And as I said, there's a couple studs here and along here, most of it being tile on top, so that you can remove this for easy access and viewing on the inside. Now, let's say you can't get a good view on, in, on the inside of here. Well, guess what? This can open up. It's attached by two hinges on the sides, which allow you to swing it open and, and allow for more play. Well, what we have inside of here, we have another sticker, which is used as a flat screen TV. So I must have some way of getting cable. We also got a large bed inside of here, which we can fit a minifigure on, whether sitting up or laying down. Now, she doesn't lay down entirely because of the little pillow in the back. But if you want to get her now, if you want to, let me say this correctly. If you wanted to get her looking like she's asleep the best way, you would have to move her to here because the chair is interfering with the other part of the bed. Now, also inside of this back section, we have a small cup and stand and we have a chair. The chair is at a nice angle, at a nice height, excuse me, for the minifigure to fit in there but and also see out the window. You can see that on this side. We can close that up. It closes very nicely. It doesn't really attach to anything for when it closes in. It just fits into place. And it really doesn't have much tendency to open up unless you really, really shake it. So when you're driving it around like this, it's really not going to open much, which is a good thing. Now inside of here, we do have an opening so that you can see the driver's side. So the, the, two, uh, the two townsfolk can communicate to each other while driving. And that's not too bad, you know. Maybe, you know, they switch off every once in a while so that one's driving while the other one's taking a break. And that allows them to, you know, catch up on some sleep and they'll be ready to drive for later. We do got this very nice cars piece in the front, which doesn't appear often in this color, but I do like how they did that into the van. Um, we did, we've seen that for a couple different city sets in 2013 and then this year, 2014. So I like how they're still trying to use it after the Disney theme has been discontinued. We're going to take off this section just to show you how the 
rear view mirrors are made. They're made as a little bit larger ones than on regular cars, and then similar to ones that are made for trucks. It's very easy with the one by two cheese wedge pieces, and just easily fits on there. So it gives a nice look from the back. I remember once when I was driving, I saw uh, someone's bumper sticker, and this is for a large truck. I saw someone's bumper sticker that said, if you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you. And that's a really good point for driving because you want to be sure that the person in front of you can see you. And that's, you know, to keep a good distance away from them and so you don't have any trouble or accidents. Now these two sides do open up and if you have a little bit of way with the rear of your mirrors, you can lift these up a little bit so you can get the door fully opened. You can see our minifigure fitting in there. And it only really has space in the front for one minifigure, as you can see by the cabin area. He does have a cup, as well as the lady in the back having a cup. And it seems like a funny thing, but also a nice thing that in LEGO City sets, we get a lot of these cups for drivers. Because, you know, most modern cars and trucks would have some sort of coffee cup and or some sort of cup holder. And, you know, it's just nice to have while driving, so it keeps you alert and awake. Now I noticed with this set, I haven't seen it too many sets, but I did notice with this set, particularly once I was building it, I'm going to take that off so we can see a little bit better on the inside. There's a little dashboard. No real detail on there though. I noticed while I was building this, the steering wheel is a little bit higher than in some previous LEGO City sets. And I actually like that a little bit because in coordinates with the driver, the steering wheel should be a little bit at the mid mid torso level so that makes sense and it also gives it a little bit easier way for him to show that he's driving when he's in the front maybe you can see a little bit better on this side there we go so there we have our camper van and now let's consider what I think about this set now as you knew from my excitement on the beginning of this uh, Lego set review that I was really getting into this and I was trying to keep my excitement down so that I can Allow you all to have fun with watching the review I didn't want to exaggerate on anything and I didn't want to praise everything with this set because you know sometimes there are flaws and There are a few in this one as well Now overall this set is really nice for its size um, Lego City does very well with the six wides um system of making their cars and trucks. This one seems at a relative height to minifigures and that was an easy way of tipping over. <laughs> um, it's got very nice detail on it that you know keeps it fresh you know with little things like these even on the back and front just to you know just to keep it from looking too bland. Um, it's got some great window pieces that can you know that work out in just the right areas for minifigure use. Um, it's also, it doesn't have too much as far as the features go, but I do appreciate this part opening up. Although it's a little bit inorganic to actual cars and camper vans, because I don't think most of them would open up this way, it is nice to have as a quick and easy function for, for play. Um, so that's probably the one thing that's a little bit not so authentic with this set. I do like how the cap how the canoe is included because it's a very nice piece to have. It's the first one that I've ever owned and I know it's been featured in many different sets from the Pirates era but those days are long behind us and you can't find them too much in stores nowadays. So it's nice to see it in a nice red color and it does have capability to fit two maybe three figures inside of it as well as holding the minifigures hands on the sides. I forgot to show that in the video but take my word it does work very well it's a nice piece to have now I can't compare it to other camper vans we've had in the past because I don't have them built and even more than that I don't even have them so I know it's uh, that's also why I didn't want to exaggerate on details in the beginning because I don't really you know I can't make a fair judgment uh, to other camper vans I know other ones have had you know a trailer attachment or that have more features, and one had a bicycle, and things like that. But I still like how fresh that each of these campers are made. They don't have to be exactly the same to perform, you know, necessary functions that it needs to. It does very well with the 
things that it want that it's designed to do. It's got a nice fresh look to it. It's not too plain and it's not too colorful either. Um, and I say not too colorful as in, you know, flashy with colors, you know. To some sets, they can be a little bit exaggerated with colors. We, do, we, we have a basic white with this one with some grays here and there. We also have this green and brownish um, color scheme, which not only affects the pieces, but also affects the stickers. Now, the one thing I don't like about this set, other than... Uh, other than the fact this isn't real, I don't actually mind that as a play feature, but if you want it to be authentic, it's not a real thing. Um, the one thing I don't like about this set is the stickers. Now, I don't mind how many stickers there are, I but what I do mind are the placement of the stickers in the set. Since a lot of them look very close to each other, it's very hard to tell which ones go on which sides. I had to be very careful when I was working on this in the instructions, so that I put them on the right way, especially with the canoe, these two pieces had to be going the same way, and the ones on this side, they had to be going the same way, along with, you know, these. So it's very easy for those to get mixed up because they are very, very close to each other, even though they're the complete opposite direction. Um, for younger kids, it may be, you know, quick and easy to mess that up. Also, with the white background on them, you want to be sure that they don't get attached to other pieces by accident. So even though they fit on their own piece very well, they could just accidentally slip over on that piece. I'm also not a big fan of the sticker on the front. I mean, the city one, uh, I, I guess I'll let it pass. I wasn't really sure why they need to put that. They don't always put it for city cars, but I guess they do nowadays. But I was wondering why they had the, the bumper sticker so far off to the side. I understand, like I said before, they don't want to put it in the dead center b between two bricks. And that's something that I appreciate. But why couldn't they put it a little bit more towards the center? And again, as I said before, maybe it's because they don't want to confuse it and attach it to both of these. So in the kids, you know, perspective, they want to keep it on one piece and to be clear that it's on one piece. I forgot to mention this before, but I also like the lighting details on here to give some, you know, modern effect to it when it comes to turning signals and lights on top, even lights on the back. I mean, this is a kind of van that you would probably see most likely and sometimes often um, when you're vacationing or when you're traveling because this is definitely something I could recognize in real life and say, hey, they did really good. This looks just like, you know, a regular camper van in modern times. I really do appreciate that they have two minifigures and both minifigures fit in here well. Because sometimes minifigures are thrown into a set, but you don't know where to always put them. So I do like how this has enough space so you can put both minifigures in there and they can have a good time. I also like the bed details because it's a unique idea to have it in the set. I also like how this spot has extra storage on top so you can add things in there. Um, I know I didn't show you what it looks like as far as the life jackets on them, but I figure it's probably unnecessary because you can see that from the box. It usually fits on very well, so I do like the new version of life jackets. Looks a little bit more authentic than the older versions. Um, and also, even though the minifigures in this set are pretty plain and have been used before in different torsos, it's actually, to me, one of the easier ways to get them. I don't see the guy's torso too often as the, uh, the, as the lady's torso, but it's still nice to get in a $20 set. 195 pieces at $19.99, it's close enough to price per piece, but I think it does it well. So thanks for watching this video, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time with more LEGO set reviews. Oops, hit the box.